Hello, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name happens to be Steve Faulkner, and this is my live waffle that happens on a Thursday evening. Uh, before we carry on, I'd like to like and subscribe. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, I presume you all have, but if you haven't, I would very much like to do that because I'm on like eight and a half thousand now. And when I started this, I thought, imagine getting 10,000. And 10,000 like proper organic, you know, I've not, never really put anything out there to get subscribers or done anything like that. So it's, um, I'd love you to subscribe. And I'd also like you to tell people to subscribe. I'd like to tell all your friends, even non-magicians, no, don't tell them that, um, to subscribe to this channel. So that'd be lovely. If you could just swamp the Magic Cafe uh, with images. <laughs> images of me, no, don't. Um, but do that, so uh, that'd be lovely. And of course, do check out the, the engine that runs the whole thing without this thing coming up, there is no this channel. That don't make sense, does it? Anyway, uh, onlinemagic.co, nearly said cardmagiccourse.com again, what it used to be called. Uh, my online resource, 800 videos now, live sessions, there's one of them there, and we'll be having one in um, about half an hour. No, an hour, that's what it'll be. Um, having a good chat about the session, and of course what our takeaways were from the session. There are a beginner's course in rope magic on there, there's new over half the book of the Royal Road to Card Magic um, on a course there. There's basically loads and loads of different courses, but do please have a look on linemagic.co. Have a look. Go on. After this. I'll even allow you to leave this live stream to have a look. No, don't do that. Um, so, today we're just going to have a, a chat about, I don't know, really. I've got some comments that I'm going to read out, which is the point of this show, if you haven't watched it before. Comments on comments. You put comments under the videos and I read the ones out. Um, that, well, I pretty much read all of them out at the moment, other than the ones that just say the channel's lovely, because even though it's very much appreciated, I feel a bit self-conscious reading too many of them out. So if you do have questions on any of the uh, videos, do know that I read them all and know that I will be, you know, answering a lot of those questions on these live shows. And I'll do some more giveaways at some point. Uh, I haven't done one in a long time. So let's have a quick look. Um, oh, lovely. Michal Kacholek, how you doing? Remind me of that pronunciation. I'm, it's wrong again, isn't it? Kau Kau anyway, so Michal does a lot of the uh, design for the Vanishing Ink books, pretty much all of them, I think, and the um, oh, majority of them, and the, uh, the lovely Richard Turner um, poster that everybody got at the end of the session, and all those posters Michal does. So, and and a, a ruddy good, a ruddy good card magician. That's what he is. Um, so, good to see you, mate. I, I reviewed one of your very early things, didn't I? Polish poker, which was great. So, uh, have a look at that. Tom, hope you're good. Uh, Muppet on meds, how you doing? Pete, hope you're good. Nice to hang out the other day. Gary, you're coming to the session next year, hopefully. Um, good to see you, Stuart. Uh, let's get this party started. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if this is what your parties are like. Actually, this is, this is my highlight of my week, actually. This and the live session, of course, the, the online magic got co one. Uh, Gary, good to see you. Um, lots of people saying hello. Mike Shaw, how you doing, Mike? Tom Winder, good to see you, mate. Uh, Peter, hi, Steve. Great to meet you at the session. It's my first live I've ever joined. Well, I hope you enjoy it, Peter. Get ready for a good old waffle-thon. And uh, Daniel, hope you'll get to. And Chris, good to hope you well, mate. So... Uh, I'm going to go to comments. I haven't got loads. I've been doing obviously over Christmas. I was away, and when I got back, it all kind of went went by the way. Well, it didn't, but you know, I did. Um, not as regular. I haven't been as regular. How you doing, John? Uh, number one thing, getting those misery vibes. <laughs> I'm going. Oh, I didn't tell you what happened. Oh, it's heartbreaking. Some of you will know if you read my uh, listen to my Facebook waffles every day. But yesterday, my camera, that camera there, my pride and joy, the reason this looks all right, is uh, the tripod collapsed and it fell backwards and it broke itself. It did, my camera. And I'm waiting to see if I can get the insurance money. And if I can't, I'm going to be very sad. Luckily, I can still film, but I can't remove it from this building, really, because the doors don't close and it's all mangled. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> nice one, Daniel. Uh, so, that's a shame, isn't it? And it happened as I was recording. So if you watch later on at half nine, there's a review going out of the second day of the session. And I've got a little bit on the end, which was like seconds after it happened. 
and it was uh, <laughs> it was very sad. So let's do some. Uh... Oh, where have you gone? Oh, there you go. I've, I'm still here, aren't I? Blind me, I've clicked on a thing. Yes, I panicked then. This was the comments I had on the um, latest workers way back. The new routines for 2023. Um, Gid said, uh, love these sort of videos. and get to see what people are performing. What they like and don't like gives me food for thought when I see other effects go well with what I already do. This is why I love the pre and post gig videos on the Discord. That's the Discord we have on the online magic community. People put their, you know, after a gig, they'll put a little video on saying how they got on. And it's great because people that are just starting out, uh, like Gid, who's done quite a few now, anyway. mate. Um, and I think you're right. I, th I love seeing what other people are performing because actually, if it wasn't for that, there'd be routines that I wouldn't know went down well. Because sometimes when you read the explanation of a routine or even see a trailer of a routine, ah, it's not going to go down very well. And it's so surprising sometimes. So I think it's really worth listening to what people are saying that this kills. And some people, you know, say stuff kills and it doesn't. And you see them doing that, it's not killing. But most people, I'd say, who kind of get out there and do it can can be a wealth of knowledge and I think that listening to people talk about magic and uh, it's been one of the most valuable things of lessons I've ever had in my life just just observing conversations um I uh, uh, play piano for fun finally someone who sees the beauty of Danny's charmed that I see the effect and the uh, D DG retention single-handedly got me into his work so Danny Goldsmith, I was talking about this, and he has a routine with a ring called Chun, which is just it's so commercial. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, don't get excited, I'm not going to do anything good. Um, it, it's got all this kind of stuff in it when you, the kind of, he's holding a ring and it goes like that and it comes out of the ring and then you, you can kind of, you taps it against the ring and it disappears and comes out of the ring. Um, it looks all right on there, actually, doesn't it? And the DG retention is something I still can't do very well, which is a retention vanish, which is like a normal retention, but happens differently the, the mechanics are different which means it looks yeah so i'm still not getting the the movement of it the lack of movement but it's a, it's a lovely um project i'm really enjoying playing with it oh, I, yeah see the, the fingers are still moving but anyway so uh, yeah dennis am i too bright it's bright when i put it there in it but it's all right um so yeah yeah i definitely check out danny's stuff um and I was talking about the Malero rings as well. Talk about synchronicity. I've been working on the Malero rings for about a month and that section with the unlinking, the fourth ring has baffled me. I just played your quick demo at 25 speed about 10 times and now we get it. Thanks so much. You basically taught me how to do that correctly, including the ladder down bit, yeah? I simply couldn't get it from the Malero video. A good point, actually. I'm going to turn this light down. It's doing oh, too light. Um, the... The teaching on the Malero video, this is what happens, I think, sometimes when you get this silent teaching, you know, which is nice to get like the really nice camera angles. But I struggled with some of that. And I think sometimes you just want that kind of, you know, you want that someone to tell you and talk to you about the pain points. And that's the problem with those videos where it's just all visual, like David Stone's early video, which actually was great, you know, the, amazing. But what was that called? Secrets of Close Up My Oh, I can't remember. But that, that was that DVD was great, but it was all kind of silent with arrows and stuff like that. And Homie Lee Wag, but that's a stunner as well. But sometimes you want someone to say, you're going to find this bit really difficult. And the reason that is, is because it's quite confusing and taught you through that. And I just think so many downloads and tutorials just don't go into those pain points. And that's the bit that helps people. Because, you know, often you go, why don't I get this? And you need someone to tell you. And, and you know, quite often it's a universal thing that we all experience. So, um, there you go. Uh, and that was from Mike Shaw. Uh, I've been working on the DG Retention too, Dan, Daniel, Go, Danny Goldsmith. I didn't say Garcia before, did I? Bit tricky. Yeah, love to see your take on it. So my take on it is, it's just really hard. Briefly, and this isn't giving anything away. And by the way, no non-magicians are watching this channel. You know, it's just not happening. But it's basically a retention vanish. When I, with a normal retention vanish, and the one that I do, which tends to be kind of, oh, I can't see it. it, tends to be that sort of thing. There's quite a lot of movement in the fingers, right? Which is fine. You know, this is a, I think this is a kind of, it's a personal thing because when you, you know, the big, the big action covers a small action. With Danny's, there's just no movement. It's the most beautiful thing ever. And I'm learning it because it's beautiful and I, I'd love to do it. And, and that's the kind of, I think it's great. Is it required? 
um, to be a magician. No, it's, it's, it's those kind of finesses that we love to work on. Same with card stuff. So, and I just, I've had so many hours of joy being on a plane, like I said before, when I was feeling quite anxious, you know, practicing that, just a really mindful experience. And Danny's stuff's like that. I love the difficulty of it, but the doableness of it. Uh, right, so that's that. I'll come to comments in a minute. Um, that was from Chris, uh, Chris Gillinders, who's here. This is from D1G1M1. Love doing Pi Revelations. I did some magic for friends on New Year's Eve, and it was one that blew their minds. And Mental Diet also gets great reactions. It certainly does. Great video. Thank you very much. Yeah, Pi Revelations, again, one of, one of those tricks where you read it, you see it, you look at it and go, this is going to get a book out and there's numbers in it. Absolutely floors people. It's glorious. Uh, but you do need, I think it's, you don't need, I think it's better to do with, you know, mixing it with certain apps like uh, Tap, the Architecture Predictions, things like that. Uh, and uh, I found which I do it with. Great video, I really enjoyed that. Lovely. Thank you. Oh, good. Thanks, Peter. Uh, love the Pro Revelations. Um, deed under the radar. Just lots of people saying lots of lovely things. Timestamps, yeah. I am meaning to put timestamps on these videos, especially the longer ones. I'm so sorry. It, I just run out of time. Every single day, I've, got, I've done about 10% of the things um, I'm going to do. So, you know, because that's ha happened with the camera, this isn't excuses, this is just truth. Well, excuses, but real ones. Um, you know, I, I, the, the session videos that I've been putting out, even though it's just a load of photos on there, have been taking me two to three hours to do and upload and edit. So, yeah, it's a timely old thing. So I, I totally get it. Timestamps would be a brilliant idea and I need to get on it. Uh, Symmetry and Parity, the, the Ben Harris book. Um, did lots of, again, lots of people saying lovely things. Um, Pinball Wizard, um, this is definitely one of the best buys from last year. However, I read the entire book before I'd opened any of the decks. As you pointed out, Ben goes into detail about how to construct the deck from scratch. Initially, I thought, geez, I've got to do some arts and craft. Pleased I was wrong. I love using a Svengali deck, like many, I guess. It was the first trick I ever encountered, and I've always felt comfortable using it. Ben's creativity has given us a Svengali on steroids. Absolutely. Uh, Pinball Wizard 666. It's, it's such a glorious book, and... That's right, and it's great that he tells you how to do it because you you know you can make your own, but you, you get them with it, and and that's a huge expense to put all those decks in there. And they didn't have to do it; they could have got away with not, but I'm glad they did. Um, Mark Coward, uh, two four seven two. Here's a fun fact about shuffling decks: if someone could rearrange a deck of cards every second of the universe's total existence, the universe would end before they got even one billionth of the way to finding a repeat. Great review, by the way, Steve. This is now my next purchase. Just don't tell my wife I'm spending more money. Okay. I'm going to be used in court <laughs> when, there's, when there's arguments that it was my fault. Um, yeah, those facts, again, there's a lovely thing. If you go online and look for shuffling card facts, but there's a guy called... Oh, I'm going to have a mental block. He's done the thing that basically Mike Powers talks about in Tesseract. And there's a great way of explaining it. It's very long, but I learned it, and it's such a great way. But if you're doing a show, it probably take five minutes to explain, but it's, it's a corker. Um, uh, excellent review. I've been thinking about getting this. Thank you. I have a question. It's about the decks you get and making new ones. Making good cards for this means making good corners. Ah, this was about make, if you're making Svengali's, making decent corners. Corner short art, uh, corner shorts or corner rounders you can buy off Amazon. There was one that Azzy Wynn talked about, which I bought straight away, and it took a while to get here. I think I got it on eBay, but there's three different sizes of corners. Saying that, I remember having a bicycle Svengali deck that worked perfectly, but the corners were shocking on the short cards. So that over-worry about it. Um, but yeah, you, wanna, you don't want it to be too bad. Um, Tom, I'm likely to buy this because of its readability. In contrast to his book, which books were you authored do you find less readable? Right, that's a good question. Let's get into that. Blimey, that's a whole video on itself, and we've done 20 minutes. You're still here. You are. Well done. Briefly, less readable. And this doesn't mean they're bad, right? This just means that less readable... I mean, the classic is Marlowe. Now, Marlowe's very readable. It's very easy to understand. But it's just a bit dry. As is Vernon, to be honest. You know, the Vernon books, um, you know, all the, the classic ones... I can't, I just, you know, they're just instructional books. They're like this, and th th there's kind of anecdotes and stuff like that in there, but they're not, I find them very hard to read. Easy to learn from, 
well, arguably, because they are a bit dry, harder to learn from. But the instructions are, are kind of there. But just a font and everything I find uh, harder to learn from. Uh, again, the Alex Elmsley books, stunning books. Um, saying that, I haven't read them. There, there is, I think there is quite a lot of theory in there, which I quite like. Um, harder to read. There's not loads, you know. It's just all the classic old names, you know, cause again, because it's just a bit dry. It's just like do this, this you know, instructional. Anything that's kind of just instructional, I find hard to spend a lot of time with. But certain books... You know, in some of the Harry Lorraine, you know, classic collection, great books, but just again, you know, it didn't engage me in that way in case, unless there was something I wanted to go to. And they are brilliant car magic books. I'm not, this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about sitting down and just reading them. Um, flip side of that, you know, stage by, you know, things like stage by stage, script and magic. Scania, I would say, some people have said they found Scania a little bit dry. I've really enjoyed reading Scania, actually, and I might as well get back to it at one point. Um, Phoenix book, The Code, great book, and it isn't a dry read, it's a lovely read, but what the, that font, you know, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's that kind of font with a, you know, the type of, again, doesn't really matter loads, but um, it's, uh, I don't like, a, don't like a, a font like that. Anyway, that loads some there, Tom, but that's a bigger conversation, I reckon, and we'll have one of them. Let's have a look. Just a few, um, how I work in new tricks at gigs. This is going to be a longish one, isn't it? Uh, certainly one of my, this is about sort of the fear of working in new stuff, which I did also talk a little bit about my lecture in the session. Uh, lecture, mini lecture, lecturette. Uh, certainly one of my fears, I've had new routines in my case for years. We'll come to questions in a minute and stuff actually. But I've never felt comfortable trying. I love, I drive to a gig myself. This is from a swim bike run fastest. I reckon you might be a swimmer and enjoy cycling. Uh, to gig, taking myself in, tr talking myself into trying, this is so classic for me, trying new stuff. And then I get to the gig and spectators are so difficult and challenging. I think it's not the right environment. This is the classic thing, right? You get to, you know, you've got your, your workers and you get there and you realize, oh, actually, this isn't one of those gigs where I can just sit with them and talk to them. I'm going to have to just go to the new stuff. And that is true sometimes, you know. You, you want to try out new stuff where people, you can, you've got time with people, like I did at the gig where I made this, this um, video here, How I Work in New Tricks, because I had done. It was one of those gigs that was perfect for it. But sometimes it isn't, but sometimes it will feel like it isn't, but that's just you subconsciously talking your way out of it. And, and I know that because I've done it so many times. So a classic, even, even not working new tricks, but doing tricks like I've done before, but kind of lost faith in something like fiber optics that i forget how good it looks so when i get the ropes out i go this isn't going to work because these people you know, they want some sort of gambling stuff and you know flashy cars and then you do the rope stuff maybe because you've got nothing left and you have to go back and there wasn't many tables and you realize how much they love it it always kills um, and i did that when i was away i actually did it at some tables took my time with it and it's just a lovely lovely routine you forget that throwing the rope back on and the cutting the ends it's all really lovely stuff um, nailing the landing, great feeling. Yeah, totally, Tom. Meaning, the, you know, nailing that trick and getting it right. Um, lots of lovely things, lovely videos. One question with what cube mix do you use for solution? I used a f 2112, which I put on there, which is the Isui mix, but the Stephen Brundage mix is pretty much the same thing, and Henry Harris has got a different one. Um, but the 2112 Usui uh, mix is the one that's kind of the most universal, I think. It's like, the, it's like the mnemonica of the Cuban world. Uh, uh, and again, lots of nice suit. Thank you very much. And just one more thing, a couple of comments on the session uh, from Snoop. Uh, great video, Steve. Well done for hosting. Thank you. It was my first ever convention. Enjoyed it and got to meet other magicians. Great to see Fism Act winners. It was, wasn't it? My Kobe was just brilliant and Nick was so funny and entertaining. That's Nick DeFat, whose book is just constantly here. And... Um, uh, he's just great. He reminded me of this, the, of the, um, the thing I've been doing for whoa, thing that I've been doing for a while um, with a, the contact lens, and it's just such a um, a great a great thing. But it's uh, it's got some corking stuff in there. Very funny. My um, Kobe's fism. That's from Snoop. Um, Chris giving this again. My Kobe's fism routine is unbelievable. Great reviews. Thank you. Um, David, great video, Steve. Always good to hear it from the host's point of view. Peter Turner is without a doubt in my mind the best mentalist in the world. Incredible skills 
and a real ability to connect with anyone he's talking to. He's good and he's great and he, he's a lovely bloke as well, you know, it's kind of, you know, he's got all that look and he, and if he but he's a, he's a gentle giant is um, Peter and I, I like talking to him very much. Uh, and this from, from Alice Payes, who was working with Gustav Kuhn um, on the psychology of magic. Thanks for your kind words. Uh, see you soon. Um, Pinball Wizard must have been a really interesting session. I've known of Stephen Bridges for a while now. Some of his gambling exploits have led to some threatening situations. His own bloody fault, really. Yeah, that Stephen Bridges stuff is full on, isn't it? I didn't. I thought it's, I hadn't really looked into his stuff. I'd heard him mentioned a lot. Thought it was, as I said on the review, just magic. Not just magic. I'm not saying that's you know. I'm not saying just a magician, but no, you know, good magic. But I didn't know about all the card counting stuff, and it was. Um, it's really interesting to watch actually. So check out Stephen's channel. Um, Tom Rolfe, lovely Tom Rolfe, I've not been to the session but hope to in the future. The feeling I get is that this convention is a smaller, more intimate event than other conventions. Is that a fair assessment? Please share your thoughts. Yeah, so I would say, it depends what you're comparing it to. You know, when we were there, it, it, it feels small and intimate. It's 400 people, maybe a few more. So it's, you know, you can kind of go downstairs and get a seat and sit somewhere and it, it feels and talk to people. So even though the bar's busy, it's not, it doesn't feel hectic. Blackpool, you know, you go in the Ruskin in Blackpool and it's just, I can't handle very long in there at all unless I get a seat. It's, it's really intense for me. Some people love it. Um, in the Winter Gardens, it's, yes, it's, it's busy, but it's big. So you, it doesn't feel, except in the dealer's hall sometimes, it can feel really hectic. But I, I so it's, and then you get these lovely, really intimate one day events and the kind of invitation only events. So I think it, it does feel intimate. It does feel lovely. You do get to meet people. I don't, I haven't been to loads of conventions because it's only recently I've been able to start going to them again because the kids and stuff. So I'm, I haven't been to hundreds of them. I still haven't been to the one in South Shields, is it? South Tyneside, that one? Um, yeah, so, so I'm not, yeah, probably a little bit um, not... Uh, knowing enough, <laughs> I've lost my, lost my use of the English language. Uh, it's great to hear such a positive review. I must get to a, the session. Such as is from uh, Mentalism and Magic 101. Such a wide variety of magic styles. Mentalism and mass. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just what an autistic dude like me loves. Yeah, oh man, that mass. I'm really, you know, I went up to um, Arthur Benjamin and said, look, I struggle with, with mental maths. I don't know if I said this on the, I might have said this on the third day that I'm putting out. You know, I just can't do it. You know, I've got any tips. And he, got, he said, well, treat it like a card trick. Just sit and practice regularly. And I, I thought, yeah, I've never actually done that. So that's my plan. I'm going to be able to do my any card at any number with mnemonica, which involves very simple mathematics, which I can't do because I panic and get all scared and I have to do it. So anyway, there you go. That's that. Let's have a look at your comments. Um... Thanks for saying hello, everybody. Um, so where were we? Trying to watch your every move and listen is a challenge. <laughs> From Tom Winder. Uh, good afternoon, Terry, as well. Flying Lizard, good to see you. Uh, cheers, everyone, Paul Cruz. Is anyone having problems with laced up being too long for shoes? I don't know laced up. I'm terrible. There's so much I don't know, with, you know for a reviewer. I'm like a film, film review. But I haven't watched hardly any films. Um, Still on the fence about it. Well, let me know what that's like, laced up. I don't know. Exactly. There's a few different laced ones in there. So, a left-hander who cannot spread cull. Any other left-handers out there? Just want to know if it's something I'm not doing correctly. Um, it shouldn't. It should. It should. Well, yeah, I mean, I can't help you, but I think. Yeah, it should. Because if you're spread culling. Hang on, I don't think this is going to work. I haven't turned it on yet. No, I haven't turned it on yet. I thought I turned on my GoPro. Uh, Okay. If I put that in there, it could ruin everything. I'm not risking it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it won't, like basically, if you're spread culling, because I spread gold kind of looking at the cards anyway, so I think it should all be the same thing. Spread cull is just one of those, and while we're at it, free course on the spread cull below this. Um, do have a look, and the introduction to card magic course, if you're new, or even if you're not, have a look at that. Um, you are bright, but lighting is okay. Thanks, mate. Uh, Gary, yeah, I think it's spread cards one of those things that just it's a move I get the most questions about because people just get stuck on it. It's like, and I remember it where you go, why can't I'm doing everything right? Why can't and it just clicks? You just take, you know, nice, nice, kind of relaxed, 
do that straddle grip at the beginning and just take time and just know it, it takes a long time. It's not an easy move. Um, and that's from Tom. I'll put that up there. Anybody can help. Oh, that's bad, isn't it? I don't know how to change that. If I change it, it's going to... Oh, no, it fits on. Um, pain points, good term. Yeah, thank you, Tom. I agree with Gary Lightning. Fine, thanks. I'm a lefty. It doesn't help. Most tutorials are done by the right-hand people. It's just something that takes time. I know. I wish I'd had time to kind of change them all. And it some, someone said you can kind of flip and mirror the screen and put... One day, someone's going to run this course with me, and it'll be wonderful. Um, I have to work on other stuff and manage, but the colour is one I've done for ages, but don't get close to, to performance. Um, from Chris, David Penn was tying the pie revelations to the new potato watch today. It was very good. Yeah, I can't get any of that. But basically, I can't afford to buy any of that kind of potato stuff. And, and the reason is, I think it's amazing, but I'm probably not going to use it. I'm not a mentalist. You know, I do mentalism routines, but... Um, but they, they are wonderful, aren't they? Um, good afternoon, Muppet on net. Reds. I wonder how you ever find time to sleep, Steve. I know, well, I do. I'm, I'm quite good, actually. I go to bed quite early. I try to. Um, but I just do long days at the moment. And, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, sometimes I don't because I've got the kids a lot. So I just have to be careful not to procrastinate, and I still do quite a lot. 52 Factorial from Tom Market. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, yeah, Google that. Um, all the mathematics that can be applied to cards is amazing, yeah. So if you, if you type in 52 factorial or 52 explanation mark, um, you can have a look. I uh, got the As Asi Wind Corner Short, a really good. Yeah, Magic Man Pete. Pete, if you've got that, I don't know, if you've got a, a link, send it me and I'll put it in the comments. I'll put it in the comments below once this video is out, not on these comments because they'll disappear. Uh, my colour isn't great, but it's down to my handling. I just talk rubbish from this direction. <laughs> just take about half an hour. Just go, what was that over there? Uh, I find Harry Lorraine's books very easy to read. I love his teaching. So absolutely, Mike. It's such a personal thing, isn't it? And that's why I always say people, even though I'm a reviewer, do not take my word for it. It's just... And actually, I need to go back to him. It's been a long time since I've read the Harry Lorraine books. So, you know, I am better at reading magic books now. So... Uh, but you quite, I'll put that to the broadcast because it's important that people know that. Why have I dragged that? Well, I'll put that down there. Hey, Mark, you got 20 minutes to introduce me. Mark, hope you're well. It's been ages, hasn't it? Um, Mark hosted at the session uh, and did a wonderful lecture, which is, I'm talking about that lecture tonight, um, Mark. So it's, it was just great how to put a show together. You said something, Mark, that's so, that I just thought, God, it's me all over. And it made me, you know, when some people sometimes say one thing and you go, that's what I've got to sort out. And I, even though I knew this, you kind of reminded me. That thing of don't put stuff in your show just because it's something you've worked hard on. And, you know, and sometimes it's because it's something you bought and was really expensive. And there's stuff that gets brilliant reactions in my show, but I'm going, for some reason it kind of feels like it doesn't fit in there. And I'm thinking of a couple of things that straight away that I need to be ruthless about kill my darlings and just kind of you know take out the show yes they're getting well but they don't flow in the show and that's a, your lecture was great Mark it was really great and uh, lovely hosting as well very tight and I love that you got that sort of street performer kind of circus um vaudeville stuff that I love so much um 20 minutes <laughs> yeah yeah I know he's gone forever now uh stay with it hopefully someone will just click and you'll nail it Tom one yeah with a it's funny saying 20 minutes and then Gary's like, you'll stick with it. <laughs> He's not talking about the waffle. Is there anybody left here? Oh, there's more people they want to start with. That's it. Usually there's about three of us left. Uh, Andy Woodhouse. I think Paul Harris books are entertaining. They are. And good tricks. And also Al Smith magazine's Abacus and the label are entertaining reads. But most tricks in all volumes are not great. You don't, well, that's the thing, isn't it? You don't need great tricks for a good read and vice versa. You know what else is great? A good read is... Um, out of control. That's a cool cat and totally out of control. Chris Kenner. I don't know. I'll keep looking over. I don't know where anything is. No idea. <laughs> just always, I always look at the same bit and if I can't see it there, they'll just walk away from it and go, I could be a, the whole video is just me going, where is it? Um, now I am, now I'm doing that ironically because now I want to find it. Oh, knackers. Don't matter, does it? But you're right, Andy. Paul Harris books are great. Um, and the Al Smith ones I haven't, haven't read. 
Link tonight. I emailed it you, Tom. It's also in the course, and it's also in the it's in the course community. And if you go to live sessions, it's at the bottom there. Um, it was great to catch up at the session. It was lovely to catch up with everybody. I enjoyed the Stephen Bridges card counting stuff. I don't know him as a magician, just the card count on YouTube from Daniel Eagles. Uh, oh, that last one was Magic Man London. It was good to see you. Uh, love your lecture at the session. Oh, it's nice. That sounds... Loved your lecture at the session, Steve. So relatable, and I'm totally going to try that out and do the ace routine you taught. Sweet. And Tom Stone, lovely Tom Stone, gave me a little bit of work on the ace routine as well. Just a little kind of thing that breaks up the pattern, which I really, really liked. Vic... <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I'd put that one on there. <laughs> this is boring. What are you doing here, Victor? Then go. You don't have to watch it. <laughs> oh, Meow's still here. Well done. So I had to call and need to catch up. Yeah, right. I bet you went off with Victor and had a drink and went. This is boring, isn't it? You, you and me, Meow and Victor went off for a drink. So, look, looked at each other. And went. This is boring. And off you went. <laughs> It's funny isn't it, when people say that because there's so many different things to watch on YouTube. There's cats doing funny things and everything. Uh, right, I'll save you a seat with the Ruskin face turquoise drinking coffee. Nice. Uh, here are some videos of the spread code. Check them out. This is great, isn't it? Keeping it smooth and not really fumbly, specifically when sliding the card under. Sometimes we love a trick more than the audience. Absolutely, and that's all right sometimes, but it's something you love in. Um, spread curl, I, I would say. You know, oh, we should, if, if I plug that in, sometimes it affects the whole thing. Um, the hardest thing people love it is making it smooth. So if I'm going through culling the aces, and I am pausing, you know, sometimes I do pause and, and I just build pause into, pauses into the rest of it. So it's that thing of just don't try, don't look at it and think, oh, there's a tiny little pause and get proud. Just keep practicing, like everything, just keep practicing, keep practicing and it will become smooth. I have the cards in your hand all the time when you're watching telly. I used to love just going, right, I'm going to, I'm going to cull the threes and just go through it, or obviously just cull one card at a time. Have a look at the course below if you haven't got it already, uh, if, and, um, and yeah, have any questions. And I, I might share some more like technique on this channel because I know now that it's there's no one here that isn't a magician. You know, people aren't watching this. Victor might, might not be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he probably is. He's probably he's probably a pseudonym. It's probably Chris Kenner or something. Um, so yeah. So if you want if you want help with anything, the odd little thing, I, I can sort of do a little live session on it. Uh, as long as it's not giving away too much. Right. So, yeah, half five. Right, I'm going to go now. That's twenty five minutes because we had a five. No, it isn't. It's thirty minutes. Blimey. Well done. Have a good one, everyone. Remember, check out onlinemagic.co. Check out the courses below. And do please follow me on Instagram at Steve Faulkner. There is a Real Magic review one, but that's just the review stuff that's going on there. So if you want the general stuff, I'll be putting more magic on there. Um, Victor can... <laughs> is the laser disc on the court? Yeah, Leonard Green gave me... Uh, so the laser deal is on one of the live sessions. So I did a workshop on this. I love it. On one of the live sessions. Um, and, Vi uh, and Leonard did, I uh, gave him a call and he gave me permission. Great to see you at the session. Good to see you, Vin Arbor. I don't know who you are though, but it was good to see you anyway, it was good to see everybody. Uh, right, I've got to go for your benefit rather than mine. I could stay here all evening, uh, but I've got to prepare for the live session on Zoom. Go check out onlinemagic.co, biggest bargain of the year and it'll make your magic better. And do please like, subscribe, and if you want to share this or tell people about it, just say, hey, you know, so many magicians don't know about this channel, um, so do, you know, feel free to kind of spread the word. Dr. Mogg, you're welcome. See you later. Have a great one. Cheers.